Time for hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the truth, the glory of God. He saves. Thank you, John. What a wonderful, wonderful worship experience today. We're going to be in the book of Luke, chapter 2. And in just a few moments, we'll do a couple verses out of Luke, chapter 2. A couple weeks ago, we began a series of sermons simply titled, Are You Ready? Two weeks ago, we looked at, Are You Ready for a Miracle? And we looked at how Joseph and Mary responded to the angelic message that they would have a child and his name would be called Emmanuel, God with us. And last Sunday morning, we looked at the wise men and we asked the question, are you ready to give like the wise men? Because we all understand that they came bringing gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but we also looked at how they spontaneously gave the gift of worship as they walked into that house and fell down before the King of kings and Lord of lords, the one who was born a king. This morning, we're going to look at a familiar text dealing with the shepherds and ask the question, are you ready to receive the message? Are you ready to receive? Maybe this Christmas season, you've been struggling for whatever reason it might be, and the truth has been you're not quite ready to celebrate the Jesus Christ of the manger, the Jesus Christ of the cross, and the Jesus Christ of the empty tomb. I believe this morning you're ready. These songs have helped us, and they've ministered to us. So thank you, choir. Thank you, John and Noel and Pam and everybody who worked so diligently to, to present the message and song this morning. Are you ready to receive? From what we experienced last week with the wise men, and we know that that story took place when Jesus was actually one or two years old, this seems like we're backtracking in Scripture, and in fact, we are. I'm taking you to this encounter where the shepherds are told by the angel that a Savior has been born. I'm doing it strategically because next Sunday morning, I want us to look at this. Are we ready to celebrate like the shepherds? This morning, are we ready to receive... And this next week, are we ready to celebrate like the shepherds? When I take us to Luke chapter 2, you're going to hear some very familiar words. So you follow along as I give us Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 10 and following. The angel appeared and said simply this in verse 10, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Folks, I've been preaching this all week in my heart and in my life. I understand these words from Scripture. I can picture the angel appearing to the shepherds, keeping watch over their flock by night. You can too. If you'll be here next Sunday morning, our children are going to have a wonderful presentation, and there will be depicted before you shepherds and wise men and Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus, and we'll hear some of the most familiar and precious songs. But just because the story is familiar and the words are not strange to us, let's not lose the impact of what this angel says. Are we ready to receive the message. And the sad reality is that likely even in the room this morning, there are some who are not ready to receive the message. And the reality is within walking distance of this church building, there are people who are not willing, not ready to receive the message. And all around the world today, there are people who are stiff arming Almighty God. And they're putting their ears figuratively, their hands over their ears and over their hearts, and they're not receiving this message. What message am I talking about? Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all people, for to you today in the city of David has been born a Savior who is Christ the Lord. I want to begin with those simple words, do not be afraid. We live in a world that seems to be consumed with and crippled by fear. 
And you have heard me say before, and I will say it as many times as the Lord will give me opportunity, faith and fear cannot coexist. If you're going to be a person of great faith, you can't be a person who is crippled by fear. And so, the angel says to shepherds who are shaking, because the sky has parted and an angel of the Lord has appeared before them, he simply begins his statement with, don't be afraid. When you first began to learn of Almighty God, when you first heard His message, it may have stirred some fear within you. This is a different message than you will hear anywhere else. The world doesn't proclaim this message. Satan doesn't proclaim this message. Other religions don't proclaim this message. This message is uniquely Christ's message. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't let that which is uncomfortable stop you. And there are many things spiritually that are uncomfortable. It would have been uncomfortable to be a shepherd keeping watch over your flock by night, just doing your job, being your man, doing your thing, and here comes an angel to speak. It's uncomfortable. This morning, as the Lord begins to speak to your heart, maybe in Sunday school or in one of the songs that was just presented, you may be stirred with a degree of uncomfortable. This is strange to me. Why am I feeling these things? Why am I thinking these thoughts? This isn't like me. Well, this was unlike anything they had ever experienced before. Don't let the uncomfortable stop you. Don't let the unexpected stop you. They weren't expecting a messenger from God. You might have not come to church this morning expecting what's happening to happen to you. You thought, well, I'll come here, my mom, my dad, my grandma, my grandpa, my friend, my neighbor, sing a few songs. It's Christmas time. Who doesn't like Christmas? I want to be in the fellowship with other believers. But you didn't come expecting to hear a message from God, but He's got one for you. Don't let the unfamiliar stop you. Some of us are familiar with who God is and how God works, and how He speaks. Maybe we were raised in church, maybe we've been attending church for a while, and so we become familiar with the way that He works. Some of us in the room are relatively new to some of this, and it's strange and it's odd. You don't go anywhere else and sing like we've been singing, but you're here in this room and, and you're singing. You don't come into any other room with this diverse of a crowd. There's a hundred plus of us gathered here this morning from birth to somewhere in our 90s. Every kind of political thought, every kind of economic background, all kinds of stages of education, and we've all gathered in this one room, and we've got something in common. We've got a thread that runs through us because of the grace and mercy of Almighty God. It's unfamiliar to some of us. This is different. Don't be afraid. Don't let the unexperienced. You say, I, I've never done this before. I've never come to the altar at invitation time and knelt down and offered a prayer of thanksgiving or praise. I've never responded in a time of worship the way that I'm responding now. And some of you are even praying as I'm preaching. And that's just as it should be. Because it's not about me, and it's not really even about you. It's all about Him, and as He's speaking to your heart, you find yourself needing to say something back to Him. And so some of you even now are confessing sins, or you're celebrating what God has done, or you're saying, Lord, that preacher, he seems to know me. It's not the preacher that knows you. It's Almighty God that knows you. And He's speaking to your heart this morning, and He simply says, like He said 2,000 years ago, don't be afraid. Don't be crippled by or contained by fear. That which is unfamiliar or unexpected, welcome it because it may be the very message that you needed today. And the message was simply this. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy which shall be for all people. For today, in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. I know about this much Spanish, muy poquito, 
But I liked getting to preach in Spanish or preach in places where I would have a, a Spanish interpreter. And the word for today is, oi, now, oi. I love the way the messenger of the Lord, this angel, says, today, right now, let's do business. Right. I, I like today. Tomorrow seems like a long way away for me. Or next week or next year, what a drag it would have been to have been a shepherd keeping watch over your flock by night and to have an angelic messenger appear and say, you know, one of these days I'm going to have some mediocre news for you that you might be interested in, and it's coming, but we don't know when, we don't know where. It would have been a different story. But to get to hear that right now, today, not for somebody else, somewhere else, but for you, I've got a message. So let's look at this message that was delivered, and let's ask ourselves, am I ready to receive the message that informs? The message that informs. What does he say? I've got good news. News. Some of you are old enough to remember back when news was really news. They would break in. Beep, 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 beep. We interrupt this program to bring to you this important message, breaking news, life-shattering news, life-changing news. And something big had happened. And something unexpected, unprecedented had happened. And it was newsworthy. It was worth stopping everything that you were doing, everything that you were saying, everything that you were seeing. I've got to hear and see what it is. What's the news? I've got good news news. News is a recent event, a life-altering event, an important event. I've got news for you, for your life. And here it is. It's good news. We get plenty of bad, don't we? There's more than enough bad news. And if I were to ask you, well, you got any bad news to share? You wouldn't have to think long or hard to come up with some. You know somebody that's sick. You know somebody that's dying. You know somebody that got released from their job. You know somebody that's going through a divorce. You know somebody whose finances are in the tank. You know somebody who's hungry. There's a lot of bad news. The same was true for the shepherds. If they were just sitting around that night after the sheep had all bedded down, and you can picture them with all their their flocks gathered in there together, and they're poking a fire, and they're telling stories, and in all likelihood, the stories were about a lot of things that weren't quite right. Somebody had a teenage child that had gone a little wayward. Somebody's spouse had been a little cantankerous. Somebody's something had broken. Somebody was sick. And you can imagine the stories that they would tell. They would sound a lot like the stories we tell, the heartaches, the concern, the brokenness. But through the darkness comes the light of the messenger who says, Behold, don't be afraid. Calm yourself, guys. Get a hold of yourselves. Because I've got good news for you. And they, their response would have been like my response. Well, it's about time. I'm ready for a little good news. I'll receive some good news. I'm hungry for some good news. I'm all ears for some good news. This is the message that informs. This is the message that encourages us. And I hope today you'll leave this place terribly encouraged because God says, not Brent, not the Franklin Baptist Church, not the song, but God through His Word says, for today I've got good news of great joy. Great joy. And for a moment, would you allow us to just camp on the word joy and understand that the joy of the Lord is a joy unspeakable that try as the preacher may in this pulpit or any pulpit around the world, you won't find any human being that can fully and adequately express the joy of the Lord. It's unspeakable. I can't tell you the difference that the joy of Jesus Christ has made in my life. And you can't tell me the impact of the joy of Jesus Christ in your life. You can start to try, and I can start to try, and I can brag on God because God's always been there. And God's never failed me. 
And God's never forsaken me. And even in the darkest hours of a human experience, His presence is there and He makes Himself known. And there is joy even in the midst of death. There is joy even in the midst of sorrow. There's joy in the midst of sickness and pain. There's joy right there. And we would say it's an unspeakable joy. I just can't tell you how good my God is. And this morning, if you don't know Him personally, If you've never received the gift of Jesus Christ in your life, the salvation that He offers, and the forgiveness that can be yours, you need to know Him today so that you can understand what good news of great joy is all about. It's an encouraging message. It's joy immovable. You've heard the familiar song, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. You know that? This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, therefore the world can't take it away. The world may have afforded you a brand new car. The world may have afforded you a very nice home, some nice clothes to wear. Now, God is the one who's ultimately behind all those things, giving us a mind and strength and ability to work and toil, but the things of this world, they can come and they can go, right? We've seen them come, we've seen them go, and we know that's the reality, but The world didn't give us joy. The text this morning, Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, tells us where joy comes from. The angel said, Behold, I bring you good news of great joy. Joy comes as a gift from Almighty God, from heaven itself, through the person of Jesus Christ. So the joy that we have is a joy immovable. It's steadfast, it's sure, because it's part of who He is and what He does. It's a joy that's sustainable. Some of you get happy, really, really happy. And then some of you get sad, and you get crippling sadness, and it moves. And some would say, I kind of ride a roller coaster. One moment I'm happy, one moment I'm sad, and I can't explain it. I want to tell you about joy that's sustainable. Your happiness is not sustainable. You get there, and then you need something else to give you another high, and something else to give you another high, and something else to give you another high, and happiness, it can kind of waffle. And sadness can do the same thing. It can shock us and catch us off guard. Happiness and sadness, but joy is sustainable. The joy that Jesus Christ brought to my life in 1984 has been sustainable through 2018. In that period of time, everything that can happen in life has pretty much happened. I've not lost a spouse, and I've not lost a child, but I've lost a lot of loved ones. I've had this happen, and that happen, and something else happen, but the joy, it's been sustainable. He's always been present. So this morning, the question is, are you ready to receive the message that informs and the message that encourages and the message that includes? You heard it from the text. If you know me, you were already guessing. Maybe I would say something like this. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all people. Do not lose the significance of that. The good news of great joy that the angel brought to those shepherds that night excluded nobody. And maybe that's the reason God allowed the messenger to show up to the shepherds. If we were writing the story, if we were writing the book, would we have had God send the angel to the preachers of the day, or the scholars of the day, or the most wealthy, or the most popular, or the most influential? That seems like it would have made sense. You want to get the message first to the leaders, and the most important, and the ones with the most influence, and God said, nope. Not by accident and not by coincidence, I'm sending the message first to shepherds keeping watch over their flock by night so that the world will know that nobody is excluded. Rich, poor, young, old, regardless of ethnicity or gender, God's got good news of great joy today. It includes me. 
And don't think too highly of yourself. It shouldn't. I'm not worthy. You're not worthy. I don't deserve good news of great joy. I don't deserve the forgiveness, the salvation, the redemption that has been offered to me. I feel just like those shepherds must have felt all those years ago. Why, why us? Why are you telling me? What do you mean there's salvation and forgiveness? Why are you telling me about a Savior? All people, which shall be for all people. And I don't know who they are for you, but there are people in my mind that when I hear all people, I picture them and I say, God, even them? Even that one who did that thing? You've got good news of great joy for, for that one? And for whoever that is that you picture, that you're thinking of, that comes to your mind, God's answer is, well, yes. You think they're worse than you? You're, you're a filthy sinner also. Jesus explained it in his earthly ministry. If I thought it, it's as good as if I had done it. He said, you just like them. So let's not think I'm a better sinner than that sinner. We're all sinners. He says, I've got good news of great joy for all people. Shepherds didn't receive a message that was intended for somebody else. God didn't get the wrong number. The angel didn't show up at the wrong place. God wasn't trying to yell down from heaven, wait a minute, wait a minute, guys, you, you're not supposed to tell it to the shepherds. They were just the right, the shepherds were at the right place. The angel gave the message to the right people. Everybody is included. The most broken, the most outcast, the most confused, the most messed up. And God doesn't love anybody more than anybody else, but when you look at Scripture and see where Jesus spent his time, he spent a lot of time with people that were the most messed up and the most broken and the farthest out and the most on the outside of society. Nobody's excluded the message that informs, the message that encourages, the message that includes, the message that identifies. For today, in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. I tell you what, we can just come every day this week and let me preach this. For today, right now, in the city of David, there's been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The location is identified, and it's important that it be identified. In the city of David, that, that's where the Messiah is supposed to come from. They've been prophesying for generations that the Messiah would be of the house and lineage of who? David. And today, in the city of David... There's been born for you. So not only is the location identified, the recipient is identified for you. And the shepherds go, for me? Yes, for you. And you kind of lean back in your chair, for me? I'm just a man or a woman. I'm just a kid. Here's what I've done. Here's who I am today for you. He's identified the place and location. He's also identified the Savior. Not who will be, but who is the Savior. Today, for you, in the city of David, has been born a Savior, and that's what we need today. And that's what the shepherds needed then. We didn't need anything more or less. We need a Savior. You don't need a feel good. You don't need a vacation. You don't need a break. You don't need an increase. You need a Savior. Sinners don't need a physician. They don't need a banker. They don't need a teacher. Sinners need a Savior. 
And you today and I today and the nation today and the world today needs a Savior. And the shepherds needed a Savior. You see, God had identified the place and the people and the solution. You need a Savior. And His name is Christ the Lord. Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to receive? For thousands of years now, this message has been proclaimed to every imaginable kind of person on the planet in languages far and wide. I've got good news of great joy, and it includes you. You need a Savior. And in places just like this, for all of those years, some have come and said, yes, I want to receive the gift of Jesus Christ, forgiveness and salvation, full and free. And sadly, at the same time, people will get up and walk out, and they'll say, no, it's not for me. Not now. We'll do it later. Are you ready to receive? His hand is extended. The gift is extended. What is it that would keep us from receiving? Well, pride would keep us from receiving, or fear would keep us from receiving, or overthinking. Whatever it might be, why would we not receive? what it is that He wants to give us today. Father in heaven, You've spoken to our hearts. I'm confident, Lord, that there are people this morning who are ready right now to respond to You. I pray that You would keep Satan at bay. Lord, that his ways would be known, that his are the ways that cause us to fear, and his are the ways that cause us to doubt, and his are the ways that cause us to delay obedience, which in truth is disobedience. Father, for the boy or girl, the man or woman who today needs to receive the gift of salvation, I pray that you'd draw them right now to this altar. For others who need to fill this altar with prayers of praise and thanksgiving, others with prayers of confession and repentance, Lord, draw them from their seat to this altar to pray. Some are looking for a church home and a place to belong in. Lord, we don't claim to be perfect, but we know that you are. And if this is the place that you'd have for someone to serve and unite with, Lord, to be a church family, we pray that you'd draw them. Lord, do your work in these moments, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we stand and sing, you respond, please, as the Lord leads you. Come quickly. You need to pray. Please come pray at this altar. You need an answer to a question. Let's find it in Scripture. You respond as the Lord leads.